Bowen. Thanks, Madam Chair. Good to see you, Secretary Torres Small. Thanks for coming to North Dakota. And I, uh, since uh, Senator Klobuchar saved me one of my questions on precision ag, I'll help her out on one of hers. Let's talk about rural utility services, as you know, in our state, because you've been there, thanks, and you were out helping us with the alternatives to uh, slaughter uh, facilities, which is great. We've got more of them going. They've gotten some grants to do that. You met with them. Anyway, you were a rock star out there. Thank you. Uh, but now we need to get you back, and you can stop in Minnesota on the way if you want, <laughs> because same thing in the rural utility services sector, not only our for-profit, but our cooperative coal-fired electric plants are now instituting carbon capture and storage, and as you know, RUS provides a guarantee program. Talk to me about that and how you're going to come out and help us uh, utilize it to, uh, to do carbon capture on our facilities, which, by the way, they're already undertaking. They're already on their way doing it. It's very, very exciting. Senator Smith knows about it, too. Right, as you know, I mean, North Dakota is, is one of the sites where rural development has funded a carbon capture um, project, uh, specifically capturing... Um, the one they're working on right now will be the largest in the world. There we, it's so, so it certainly uh, is, is something... And we're not talking way out. We're talking like in a year. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Excited about it. <laughs> Happy birthday. Senator Hoven, thank you so much. It certainly is an important technology as we look at our broad menu of ways to combat climate change and to increase energy independence uh, and support resiliency for uh, farmers across the country as well as uh, for rural electric co-ops. Uh, we'll continue to work uh, to, to identify projects that are a smart investment, and as that technology develops, we expect to see more of it. Yeah, we'd love to get you back and, and give you that tour as well. And while you're there, you could also talk about the uh, Community Facilities Loan and Grant Program. Uh, you were instrumental in helping us with rugby, Heart of North America facility, um, which is a, another community critical care access facility. That's a really important program. We've got a number of uh, rural uh, critical access hospitals that have been able to upgrade their facilities and needed to because of that program. Talk to me about that program a little bit. Yeah, the uh, emergency rural uh, health care grants were crucial for critical access hospitals to help keep their doors open. Uh, we provided funds, and, and they, they were, so community, it was based on our community facilities program, which is really flexible, but was even more flexible because it also helped reimburse for previous expenses to keep doors open. And we saw a lot of requests from critical access hospitals that otherwise may not be operating. There's also a technical assistance component, so if you're an existing borrower from rural development and are struggling to keep your doors open as a as a ho rural hospital, uh, you can provide get support with administration decisions to help keep your bottom line uh, and, and keep operational. Yeah, and again, I'd like to show you some of the things going on out there because of that program. It's really good. And you, see, you, you get that people have to be able to access these programs to do any good. And we really appreciate that. That's the mindset that needs to pervade you know, USDA. And I think you're really showing leadership in that respect. And so I guess the last thing I'd ask is, in, in your mind, what's most important uh, for rural development in the, in the Farm Bill? Well, I, that's and I know maybe not one thing, but uh, one or two things, you know. I, the, the local vision through partnerships is cru crucial, having partnerships on the ground, uh, that community capacity, people who are able to apply for those grants, people who are able to build homes, right, and do the things that need to actually happen on the ground, being able to support that is crucial, and then also supporting a functioning rural development to have more flexibility in our program so that we can respond to, we can take the community facilities program and turn it to the emerg emergency rural health care uh, grants when there's a, a need for it, so we can take really flexible platforms and respond to existing needs. Again, thank you. Appreciate it very much, Secretary. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Thank you.